Hello and welcome. Uh, in this lecture I'd like to talk a little bit about the dot product and how we can use the dot product to measure the angle between two vectors. So let's first start by recalling the law of cosines. So the law of cosines is a theorem in elementary geometry or trigonometry where you start with a triangle and this triangle we usually label the angles A, B, C and the opposite sides lowercase a B and C across from the angles. And the law of cosines, I'm not going to prove the law of cosines here, but the law of cosines says that the uh, C squared, so we'll, do, we'll use this side here, C, side C is our distinguished side, C squared equals A squared plus B squared, which is the Pythagorean theorem as we know. And this angle looks like it maybe could be a right angle, but if this is not a right angle, then we need to adjust this. And the law of cosines tells us how to do that what we have to do is subtract 2 AB, so the lengths of these sides, times the cosine of the angle C. And of course this is the angle C right here. Okay, and so this is the law of cosines and we are going to use this to help us uh, measure angles between two vectors. So we'll just refer to this in a minute when we need it. Our real goal here today though is to determine the angle uh, between two vectors, so non-zero vectors, V and W, in any space. So the vectors have to live in the same dimensional space. Either they both live in R2, or they both live in R3, or some higher dimension if you can think of it. So let's start with it this way. So here let's say this is our vector V, and maybe the vector W uh, is this one. Okay. And what we want to determine is the smallest angle between the two. So there's two choices for how to measure the angle. One choice is we could measure this big angle around this way. Okay, uh, but that's not what we want to do because that's not going to be the smallest angle. So instead what we want to measure, and I should have drawn that angle in the positive orientation, but we want to measure this angle. So the smallest angle between the two. Now this angle uh, could be obtuse. It could be greater than 90 degrees or greater than pi over 2. Um, but it can't be greater than 180 or greater than pi in radians. So this is, this is our criteria. And so what we do is we, we look at the, and by the way, this says that they're in standard position. So all this really means in standard position when there's no coordinate system is that the two vectors have the same initial point. So they, they emanate from the same point. Okay, and so what we want to do here is we want to apply that law of cosines that we just uh, remembered. And so to do that, we need to complete the triangle. And this triangle can be completed by drawing this vector. And this vector right here is going to be the difference vector, W minus V, the way I've drawn it. Okay, and if you just change the direction of the, of the tip of this vector, it's V minus W, and you can, you can work out um, everything that we do from here will be the same. Okay, so now let's use this. We want to apply the law of cosines to this triangle. And the law of cosines, remember, we, we care about this angle here. So the law of cosines is going to tell us that the length of this side, the length of this side is going to be the magnitude of this difference vector, but it's the length of this side squared. So the length of v, w minus v squared is equal to the sum of the squares of these sides, so length of v squared plus length of w squared, and then minus twice the product of these two, V times the length of W, and then times the cosine of the angle that we care about. So the cosine of the angle theta. Okay, now recall, I'll write this over here, recall that the length of a vector squared is just equal to that vector dot product with itself. Okay, and we're going to leave the V and the W by themselves as they are, but we want to expand on this term, this W minus V. Okay, and so plugging that in over here, the length of W minus V squared, that's going to be the dot product, W minus V, dot product with itself. Okay, and now from here, the dot product obeys uh, all the distribu distributive laws that we're used to with regular numbers, and so this becomes W dotted with W minus V dot W minus W dot V plus v dot v. And of course, the order doesn't matter in the dot product, so these two middle terms can be combined, 
and the two outer terms are just magnitudes themselves. So this can be written as the length of w squared minus 2 times v dot w plus the length of v squared. All right, and we can plug that into the left-hand side of our law of cosines up here. Um, and I'm going to change the order a little bit. So we can write this as v squared minus 2 v dot w plus length of w squared equals length of v squared plus length of w squared minus 2 times this cosine product. Okay, and now all we have to do is cancel and rearrange, and then we've got our, our result. So we see here we've got v squared, v squared, length of v squared, I should say. Those cancel. We've got length of w squared, length of w squared. Those cancel. And at this point now, what we have is negative 2 times something equals, everything else is gone here, equals negative 2 times something. So those can cancel as well, right, those negative 2s. And after all this cancellation, what we end up with is an pro, a, a equation for the dot product in terms of the angle between the vectors. So v dot w equals length of v times length of w times the cosine of theta. Okay, but our goal, and this is, this is a formula that you've probably seen before, but now we've proved it, right? We've, we've derived it from the law of cosines. Um, and from here, though, our goal was to find theta, so now we just have to do a little more rearranging. Since these vectors were both non-zero, then these two terms, the length of v and the length of w, are non-zero, and we can divide. And what we end up with is that the cosine of theta is equal to the ratio v dot w over the length of v times the length of w. Okay, and then to solve for theta, we just apply the arc cosine. So theta is equal to the arc cosine, or the cosine inverse, of this ratio. Okay, and so this is our formula for the angle between two vectors. By the way, arc cosine always gives an answer between 0 and pi, right? Or 0 and 180 if you're working in degrees. And so this is exactly the angle that we wanted. It's the smaller angle between the two vectors, and it's always going to be a positive angle, right? So it's going to be oriented in the positive direction. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time.